girls need to understand it's a process and you've got to pay your dues and you've got to work at it. There's no easy way to becoming a winner in the breakaway. You've, you've got to put your time in and, and pay your dues. And I hope that all of them can do that. And I hope that all of them, you know, can do it in the right way and, and be patient about the process. Be patient with your horses and just learn, you know, go, go to someone that is successful and, and learn from them and then be able to take that and pass it on to the next generation. This is Season 3 of The Score, the Team Roping Journal's regular podcast where the team roping world talks. We've told the stories of some of the greatest cowboys, horses, and moments in the sport, and we're so far from done. In 2020, we'll bring you more of what you've come to expect, like interviews with the best cowboys and cowgirls we know, and we'll dive even deeper into subjects you care about. Look for more audio editions of the Team Roping Journal stories you might have missed in print, and learn about the great horses shaping the sport and great challenges facing our industry. All this and more in 2020. I'm Chelsea Schaefer. Hey everybody, this is Chelsea Schaefer, and this is the last bonus edition of The Score from the National Finals of Breakaway Roping. We just watched Jackie Crawford win the world title. It's her 20th WPRA world title. It's her very first and the very first National Finals of Breakaway Roping world title. It was awarded here in Globe, Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. And then Martha Angeloni just ran through him in the breakaway this week and put on a dominant show um, to win the reserve world title and to win the event at the National Finals of Breakaway Roping. You've got to check out our website. It was kind of a different format. There was a, a 10 head average, a round of eight, and then a round of four. Martha Angeloni won three rounds, and then she won the round of four at the very end, um, and also uh, split that round of eight. So she just was a beast. Beast mode, absolutely, all week. Everybody's been talking about how great Martha roped, but Everybody knows how amazing Jackie has roped all year long. Uh, she got a barrier on that last calf. We'll talk about that in the interview. Uh, but she was going for it. What a great short round. Um, what a great week of roping here at the National Finals of Breakaway Roping. I think huge things happened this week. Um, I really wish mainstream media would pick this up. Wow, this is an awesome story. It should be on uh, Sports Illustrated. It should be on ESPN Sports Center's Plays of the Week. Wow, these ladies were amazing. The sportsmanship was huge. The way that they roped, the show that they put on, the horsemanship, I mean, I am just blown away. I am i think I was more nervous, and I, I say this in this interview to Jackie, more nervous going into that round of four and the round of eight than I've ever been in a round ten for the team ropers, and I love the team ropers, and I get very involved in that situation um, in round ten. I'm, I'm very passionate, but... Uh, the way that that played out at this, the last round of eight and the last round of four was intense. So, um, without further ado, I'm going to let you listen to Jackie Crawford, and then there will be an interview with the event champion, Martha Angeloni. Jackie. Yes. That was... <laughs> I was more nervous... And I've sat through so many round tens of, with team ropers that I care deeply about, wanting everybody to win. I was so much more nervous than I have ever been. In the, the fo- Talk about the format. That was pretty nuts. Yeah. yeah that was it, nuts. It came down to one calf. Yeah. And that was crazy. And I don't even know what I think about it yet because of, you know, some of the girls that wrote so good all week and whatnot. But in the end, I think... The top four girls ended up in that. That not the top four, but the, that top four was You're pretty right. dang legit for for what had gone on the whole ten rounds. And so, um, man, it was just such a whirlwind. And it was kind of neat because it was fast paced. I, I like how we went from one to the other. You know, every once in a while I need a bathroom break, but I gotta, <laughs> I gotta hustle. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought it. I thought it was pretty cool, and and it definitely different. Um, something to get used to about how you place an average. I think a lot of people have to figure that stuff out, but yeah, um, yeah it was pretty cool. Yeah, and tell me about your feeling. You grabbed your hat after you broke that barrier. You grabbed your hat. You were like, what was going... Did you think you blew it? Um, I, I knew it was going to be close. That's what I said. I, coming in there, I wasn't going to back off. I told myself, I've, you know, I've, I've made that mistake, and I, I'm happier with myself 
getting beat than beating myself back and off. And so I knew with two behind me, I had to go at that. And so I, I wouldn't change it. Um, I'd probably go at it again. And I, I did grab my hat because I was like, gosh, this just opened. It, it, it opened a door and it made some question. I think if I'd have gotten out and made that run, mm-hmm. I'd have been pretty secure in my mind of, of where I ended up. But because of that, just the, I had to wait it out and just see. 12 calves, T-Boy was the same on every calf. Tell me about T-Boy. Man, that horse, like I said before, he's never won a horse of the year. He's never won a horse of the rope, and he's never won anything. But that horse has taken care of me for 10 years, and I guarantee you no one can dispute he's probably the highest money-earning breakaway roping horse that has ever been. And he is just, he's a pain in the butt. But we've been through some ups and downs. And, you know, I question myself. I'm like, he's 15. You know, I need to get some younger ones going. I need to get some stuff going. And we've kind of had some ups and downs you know, in the last year and me thinking, ah, you know, whatever. But that horse, every time it comes to something like this, he steps up. Like there's not a horse in the world I think would have taken care of me like he did. He makes it so easy. I never felt unconfident even being pregnant that, that he would do anything to hurt me or or anything like that. And that horse backed in there, he scored every single time. He fired, he stayed free, and he stopped hard. And I cannot, like I know he'll never know how much I appreciate him, but I appreciate that horse. You gonna get in three months off now after this, or what's his plan? <laughs> he and I both are vacationing for three months. Yeah, <laughs> he he's gonna get kicked out and get a break, and and uh, yeah, he'll come back about April. Does Cadence get to ride him much? Do you share him? No, I don't share him very well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you got to pay your dues to get on that one. <laughs> she still got some dues to pay before she gets to just take that one. And and something that we talked about with Charlie last night is that was his. That was your head horse that he won the round on last night too. That was a horse you made. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a horse I started and trained and. Um, he, I actually break away on him too, and he's he's pretty cool to break away on. And uh, he just he got to a point where it's like I'd rather see him go at that level and and do well and get to go with the NFR and just like he ended up winning around. And um, so I like seeing that stuff and those horses do well like that. And so yeah, it was pretty special. What do you think anybody listening at home, like a 18 year old, 19 year old girl, can do to help the sport grow? What are the secrets to to how do you pass the baton, I guess? What, what do people need to do to pick up the baton from you? To you know, I just I think that, that you've, you've got to put your time in and, and pay your dues, and I hope that all of them can do that, and I hope that all of them, you know, can do it in the right way and, and be patient about the process, be patient with your horses, and just learn. You know, go, go to someone that is successful and, and learn from them and then be able to take that and pass it on to the next generation. You know, I think that's so important. Absolutely. Jackie, congratulations. Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right, this is Martha Angeloni. She uh, just absolutely, like I said before, roped outstanding. Her, this meant a lot to her. Um, she's young. She's 25. She's from Virginia. She moved to Stephenville. She's a bartender, and she's amazing. She was just awesome to work with all week, a total professional, and I'm really excited for her in this win. So enjoy this interview. Hey, Martha. Hey. <laughs> uh, congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. That was so impressive. How did, yeah, talk about that round of eight. Um, the most intense breakaway roping maybe I've ever seen. Yes, ma'am. When I came back, I think it was seventh in that round. Uh, I knew when I just saw Jackie be 1 8, and I knew that I had Jordan behind me, I knew I couldn't shoot to be 2 2 or 2 3 because I felt like Jordan was going to show out like she did. And I knew I had to throw fast and I was going to push the barrier, and I'm lucky I got out and it worked. Yeah, absolutely. And your horse, how, how did you feel about him today? Awesome. He was a true winner today. He didn't make one mistake all week, and I, he did awesome. Is Charlie who was helping you in the box the whole time? Yes, ma'am. He was helping me the whole time. He saw that my horse was getting a little nervous yesterday and asked me if he wanted if I wanted him to help me, and he stepped in there and did. Did he say anything to you? No, he just said, do your thing, basically. He said, good luck and do your thing. That's pretty cool that the husband of the of the guy who you were going head-to-head with for the world title was the one helping you in the box. Yeah. That's pretty special. Yes, ma'am. It was an awesome feeling. And Jackie roped her butt off all week, and 
even when she went out in that round, she, I mean, she made up for it and just continued to win as much money as she possibly could. And you told me that this money was going to mean just a ton to you. Can yes, you ma'am. elaborate a little bit more? What does this money mean? A lot. Uh, my truck that I have right now has been having its turbo light on for about probably four months now, and I've been really getting needing to get a new one and didn't really have the down payment. So I think that's the first thing that I'm going to do is get myself a new truck so I'm not stranded on the side of the road somewhere. Uh, I've heard a lot of girls trying to evaluate right now what they're going to do going forward. I mean, it seems like the WPRA and the PRCA are making a big investment in your support. The WCRA has huge opportunities. I mean, are we going to see you be a full-time rodeo cowgirl? Or are you ever going to quit your day job? What are you thinking? I don't know if I'll ever just outright quit my day job, but if they set it up to where we have a finals again next year, I'm definitely going to make sure that I try to be in that top 15 to give myself a chance. Um, what the PRCA, the WCRA, everything, all the associations, how much they've blown up the breakaway and made it an actual like important sport, not just a jackpot sport. We can't thank them enough. Like We thought we were just always the ones that was going to go to amateur rodeos and win a couple thousand, and now when we have the chance at this, it's just unreal. You were so close this year. You said you want to be in the top 15 next year, uh, going for a gold buckle again, of course, next year too, probably. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to try my best. I didn't rodeo at all this summer. Most of my money that I won was off of Fort Worth, and then I won Stephenville and a little bit at Mesquite. But other than that, I didn't go. I didn't really know there was an end game. I mean, I should have realized that there probably was going to be. But I just, I don't know. It was awesome that they even put all those rodeos on for all of us and gave us a chance to have a finals at this stage yeah I talked to Larry D she said she thinks she only team roped about five times this year did you team rope much or, and are you, <laughs> you I know you said at the WCRA what's your team roping plan for next year uh I'm gonna try to team up team rope just as much and go to all the all girls and stuff and I like going to all like the Tuesday night jackpots and everything around the house usually if I'm going to the jackpots it's kind of more the team ropings than it is the breakaway during the week and then the breakaways on the weekend so congratulations thank you ma'am mm-hmm This episode is brought to you by Cactus Ropes, Fastback Ropes, uh, Helomatic, Cactus Saddlery, Cactus Gear, as well as Resistol and Charlie One Horse. So that means all of Pro Equine Group is behind the Breakaway Roping Journal this week, all year. They really help us uh, tell the stories of Breakaway Ropers across the board. So thank you to all of Pro Equine Group, Cactus Saddles, Cactus Gear, Cactus Ropes, Fast back ropes, resist all, and Charlie One Horse. They believe in the future of breakaway roping. They want to be a part of it, and we are glad to have them. <laughs>